Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Five on the Front Line, produced by AIHA. I'm your host, Mark Ames. The pandemic has brought into sharp focus a reliance on workers, but even a year, but even a year into the pandemic, those workers deemed essential may not have adequate workplace health and safety protections. This is particularly true for Latinx workers and other communities of color. Our guest today is Jessica Martinez, co-executive director of the National Council for Occupational Safety and Health, one of the leading nonprofits advocating for safe and healthy working conditions. Welcome to the show, Jessica. Thank you so much, Mark. It's a pleasure to be on your podcast today and then talk a little bit about the work that we're developing at National Kosh. Absolutely. Jessica, your organization just issued a new national agenda for worker safety and health. Two questions for you. Why did National Conch feel the need to issue a new agenda and why now? Well, we do feel that it's a new day and it's time to reset our worker and health and safety priorities and our platform. With all the terrible news and loss that we have suffered, there is some hope. This is the worst occupational safety crisis of our lifetime. And we're finding that the media and policymakers and the public are now focused on the issues that National Kosh and AIHA have been talking about for years, the health and well-being for workers. We think it's time to seize the moment, which is why we brought together over a hundred labor and community groups last week to release our national agenda for worker safety and health, which is on our website in both English and in Spanish. And our goal is to build worker power so we can make our workplaces safer and protect ourselves, our families, and our communities. Um, this agenda is intended under a new administration with a new approach to help OSHA succeed instead of fail, to keep us all safe instead of exposing us to content um, that is um, more dangerous on the job. The Kosh agenda was developed by, by workers by unions, safety advocates, and worker organizations, many of which are on this, um, that have joined us in our movement for some time. It's based on real experiences in our workplaces to confront COVID-19 and other hazards. And it's been endorsed, as I said, by more than a hundred organizations. Yeah. So just to give you a couple of highlights from our eight point agenda. So we, we feel strongly that one, we need stronger safety laws and tougher enforcement, including a mandatory emergency standard to prevent the spread of infectious disease. We need to uh, stronger protections against retaliation. So all workers, including undocumented workers are free to speak up about dangerous conditions and that workers are included in all policy decisions. Uh, fourth is that we have equity and inclusion, an end to misclassification and better protections for temporary workers, that we have paid sick and family leave for workers, no corporate immunity from COVID related claims for companies or corporations, and um, that we have also a worker centered health protocols, including help for high risk workers in getting access to vaccines. Um, we also uh, recommend that we confront the workplace effects of climate change and finally that we prevent chemical catastrophes and harmful exposures like the preventable tragedy we just saw two weeks ago uh, in Georgia at a meatpacking plant. So these are a couple of our highlights um, in the agenda and, and we hope that um, with this new administration, uh, with OSHA, new OSHA leadership that we're able to move forward in a more effective way. Well, fantastic. Uh, you have an ambitious agenda. In the few seconds that we have left, I'm curious about the next actions, especially with respect to communities of color. What's, uh, what are you going to do to implement the agenda, take action? So we, uh, in our network, um, we pride ourselves in being able to have direct connections with workers on the ground. Um, and we are hopeful that in the next uh, next year and then throughout this administration, we're able to mobilize our worker leaders to speak directly to the leadership of OSHA in terms of priorities and be able to also exercise their rights at the workplace through with their employers. Um, and these recommendations, again, are we have done teach-ins, we have done trainings, um, trying to figure out what is the most accessible way for workers and advocates um, and members at AHEA can access this information. Fantastic. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for coming on the show, Jessica. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be on.
And thanks to everyone for joining us. Five on the Front Line is produced by AIHA. Please subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts and on AIHA's YouTube channel so that you don't miss a single episode. I'm Mark Ames wishing you a safe and healthy day ahead.